Okay, so uh, we'll be discussing uh, chapter 15 today, it's diversity of animals. <clears throat> like the uh, uh, chapter 14, this chapter is also very descriptive and it's just very drawn out. So we'll try to <clears throat> get through it, um, but uh, I might skip some, some of the details and some of the uh, names and so on. Because, I mean, some of the names are just impossible to pronounce and so forth. So King Kingdom Animalia is a multicellular eukarya. Uh, there are about 1.4 million described species. And we're constantly discovering more. And the animal classification system is based on their anatomy, the features of embryological development, and their genetic makeup. And this scheme is also constantly changing. <clears throat> We'll be discussing the feature of animal kingdom, sponges and cnidarians, flatworms and nematodes, and arthropods, mollusks and annelids, echinoderms and chordates, and vertebrates. So some features of animal kingdom. Common, common features are that they are all eukaryotic multicellular. Most are motile, at least some in some stages in life. All animals are heterotrophic, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, or parasites. Most reproduce sexually or with offspring developing via a body plant. Um, most animals have specialized tissues formed from cells with specialized functions. There are four types of uh, tissues, nervous tissue, uh, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, muscle tissues, that's for the movements, connective tissue, that's for the bones, and ligaments, and things, and epithelial tissues. These are the internal and external surface cells on the skin and organs. Shown here, a black bear is eating a trout or a salmon or something. And here is D. imidis. This is a heartworm parasite that infects dogs and other mammals. Most animals have diploisomatic cells and haploid gametes. Bees, wasps, and ants, male is haploid because it develops from unfertilized egg. And almost all animals with sexual reproduction is the only mode of reproduction. And the zygote and develops into a young that resembles the adults. In insects, they go through some metamorphosis in order to do so. In some animals, like invertebrates, fish, amphibians, and reptiles, they can reproduce asexually. And in parthenogenesis, unfertilized egg develops into a new offspring. So what happens in Jurassic Park? What was the scenario? DNA from frog was joined with that of the dinosaur. And that led to uh, unfertilized eggs developing into dinosaurs. That this is where they get the idea. Um, classification features of animals. Class uh, animals are classified by morphological and developmental characteristics, such as body plan. And except for sponges, animal body plan is symmetrical. Body parts are balanced along an axis. And developmental tissue layers, body cavity, coelom, and other developmental features are used to classify. <clears throat> and the phylogenetic tree can show these classifications. So the symmetry is shown here. Uh, asymmetrical, radial, or bilateral in symmetry. So sponge is an example of an organism that's asymmetric, shown here. C anemone has a radial symmetry. Body parts radiate out from the central axis, not longitudinal like the textbook says. Goat hair is bilateral, <clears throat> two mirror halves along the center. You can view this uh, symmetry video. I'm not going to show it here. Um, so let, uh, and the, during embryogenesis, most, of, most, most animals undergo layering of tissues, germ layers, that develops into tissues and organs. Diploblastic animals develop two layers, 
inner endoderm and outer ectoderm. Here's a dipyloblast showing ectoderm in blue and endoderm in green. Triploblasts develop three layers, endo, ecto, and mesoderm between them. Triploblast is here, and the mesoderm in orange is shown in between endoderm and ectoderm. Uh, and triploblasts may develop a body cavity from mesoderm called a coelom. A coelom is, uh, is in between body wall and digestive cavity, or digestive system, rather, and they house things like kidneys, spleens, and the circulatory system. Eucelomates have true coelom developed from mesoderm, Many animals like earthworms, snails, insects, vertebrates, they all are considered uh, true, uh, considered eucelomates. Acelomates lack the coelom, and mesoderm is filled with cells. Flatworm is an example of that. And pseudocelomates have cavity, but not lined with mesoderm. Roundworm is an example of that. So we said <clears throat> phylogenetics can be used to classify or it's organize the information. So so book had this um, as this uh, this question, and uh, I thought we would go go over it uh, because it kind of tells you how to read the phylog phylogenetic tree. <laughs> you metazoa. <clears throat> have specialized tissue and parazoa do not. Is that a true or false? Eumetazoa is here, says specialized tissues, and parazoa is down here. It has no tissues, so this must be true. Both acylomates and pseudocylomates have body cavities. Well, we said, uh, well, it's, it's not shown here. What we just said, Acylomates do not have body cavity, so that's false. So chordates are more closely related to echinoderms than rotifers, according to the figures. Chordates are here, echinoderms are here, but rotifers are up here. So they're farther apart, so that's true. Some animals have radial symmetry and some animals have bilateral symmetry. There's a bilateria and radiata down here. So that's true also. Protostomes and deuterostomes. There are two groups of eucylomates based on the fate of the blast blastospore. Blastospore is shown here. Uh, in protostomes, mouth first, the blastospore becomes the mouth. Uh, these include arthropods, mollusks, and annelids. In deuterostomes, mouth second, the blastospore becomes the anus first. And these are things like chordates and echinoderms. Here's the, pro here's the protostomes, and here are the deuterostomes. And the blastospore opening here, becoming the mouth first, whereas in deuterostones, it becomes, becomes the anus first. Now, now we get to the point where we're really uh, getting into the details of various animal kingdom and the phyla. And I'm really not sure sure as to how much detail I, I have included a lot of the details but i'm not sure if i want to go over all of the details so i might skip much of it so 95 percent oh, i lost my uh just a second and here 95 percent of uh, animals are invertebrates and of these sponges and cnidarians are the simplest um they have specialized cells, but they lack 
uh, true tissues. Um, so here's a diagram of uh, a sponge. Here's, some, here's the osculum, which is the opening on top. And inside it's called the sponge seal. And the between the outer layer and the inner layer, there's this layer called mesohyl. It's a jelly-like substance uh, with spicules that gives it its shape. And the food gets trapped in the mucus layer. And then it is ingested by choanocytes, by a phagocytosis. And we call this intracellular digestion. And intracellular digestion limits the food size to be smaller than choanocytes. <clears throat> uh, sponges can reproduce sexually as well as asexually. And the asexual reproduction occurs by fragmentation. A small piece breaks off. Or it can also use budding, which is a outgrowth of the parent, or by gamules, or a cluster of cells surrounded by a tough layer, which survives the uh, hostile scenario and attaches to a new substrate. And uh, sponges are hermaphrodites which produces eggs first and then sperm later. And eggs are produced in amoebocytes and retained in the spongiocele. Sperms are generated from choanocytes and spread by osculum, the opening on top. And the development occur occurs in the sponge and the free swimming larvae are released, which be uh, then becomes free floating and then settles down and attached and becomes sessile. Cnidarians, known, they are known for the cnidocytes or stinging cells with organelle called nematocyst. Um, <clears throat> these cnidocysts, or, yeah, yeah cnidocy, cnidocytes are concentrated around the mouth and they capture the prey with toxin. And the nematocysts fire coiled thread shown here with barb that has a toxin, toxin and that stuns the predator or the prey. They have two main body plans, medusa type and the polyp. Medusa is shown here, polyp is shown here. They are, uh, medusa are motile with mouth and tentacles hanging from the bell-shaped body. Jellyfish is an example of that. Polyps are sessile with mouth facing up, showing up here, and, uh, and has tentacles around it. And in some canidarians, polyps and medusas alternate. All canidarians have two tissue layers, epidermis on the outside and gastrodermis on the inside. And between the two layers are non-living jelly-like mesoglia. Having, um, they also have differentiated nerve secreting observing cells, but they don't have organs. And their nervous system is primitive network of cells connecting nerves to contractile cells. And they perform extracellular digestion in the uh, gastrovascular cavity. Their gas exchange occurs via diffusion across the epidermis and gastrodermis and water. They number about 10,000 species in four classes. And that's things like sea anemones, jellyfish, box jelly, and hydra. So here are some pictures of it. Sea anemone shown here, jellyfish shown here, box jelly shown here. Only a drawing of it. It's very toxic. And here's a hydra. Now we're moving on to flatworms, nematodes, and arthropods. All animals above this phyla are triploblastic, meaning they have three layers. They have the mesoderm, and they are bilaterally symmetric. 
uh, flatworms are mostly parasitic and they have a very simple digestive system with one opening that takes in, takes in food and expel waste. They're, they have simple excretory canal with network of tubules containing flame cells that have cilia that direct waste fluid out of the tubules. And here's the, here's the flame cell and cilia are located here and tubule is directing the excretion out the pore. Um, <clears throat> their digestive system starts at ventral opening in the middle and extends throughout the body. And the uh, mouth and anus is shown here in this diagram. Their nervous system has two cerebral ganglia in the head around the eyes. So here are the cerebral ganglia shown here. Here's the eye spot. Uh, and the nerve cords uh, cross connect along the length of the body. And the nerve cord is shown in yellow here. And the connections shown, uh, shown all across the length of the body. It has no circulatory or respiratory system. Gas and nutrient exchange depends on diffusion and intracellular junctions. And this limits the thickness of the body. And they are hermaphrodites and the asexual reproduction is common. There are four classes of flatworms. Um, I'm not gonna say these names because it's not gonna register. Um, Bedford's flatworms and planarian is one class. And there's also external fish parasite that makes up another class. And they produce enzyme to digest the uh, fish tissues. Flukes are internal parasites of mollusks, which are the primary hosts. And then they can infect humans. As a matter of fact, schistomiasis or blood fluke infect 20, 200 million people in the tropics. And this infects the organs and feeds on the red blood cells and gets released in the feces. And the tapeworm is also a flatworm. And this lives in the intestine of primary host and it attaches using a sucker. And the rest of the body is made up of units of pro units of proglottids, each with female and male gametes. And they absorb nutrient, nutrients directly through the body wall. Now, nematodes, these are the round worms. There are about uh, 28,000 species with 16,000 being parasites. They have a uh, cuticle, a flexible outer exoskeleton, made of chitin. And this provides protection, but it must be shed once in a while. And they do have complete digestive system, starting with mouth, intestine, and ends in anus. And they have the dorsal nerve uh, runs along the top of the animal and joins a ring-like head ganglion. Head ganglion is shown here. And the dorsal nerve is shown in this purple color here. They also have a long testis, uh, testes, located centrally, shown here. And the cuticle, uh, obviously, is shown here on the surface. Some are hermaphrodites. Others can employ parthenogenesis or can have different sexes or dioecious. Moving on to the arthropoda. Arthropoda is the largest phylum by species number. About 85% of known animal species belong to arthropoda. They have segmentation of the body and the joint legs. The exoskeleton is made up of chitin. And uh, they have true coelom and protostomic development. Um, they their segments fuse to form head, 
thorax, abdomen, and cephalothorax. Their blood cavity forms the open circulatory system that bathes the organs in blood. And they have two chambered hearts. They have varying respiratory systems. Some have trachea, tubes. Some have gills. Some have book lungs. These are stacks of tissues like book, like a book, and also book gills. Um, there are five subphyla, uh, one of which is extinct. There's the hexapoda. They have six legs, three few segments. These include things like insects, bees, ants, then there are the ones that include centipedes, centipedes and millipedes. They have many, many legs. Then there are the crustaceans. These are the dominant aquatic arthropods. Some have fused head and thorax, and we call that cephalothorax. And uh, uh, covered in, uh, they have calcium carbonate in the skeleton that makes them strong. Then there are the ones that include spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs. And these have first pair of the appendages, chelicera, that are used for feeding as well as inject injecting venom. Now moving on to mollusks and annelids. 23% of marine species are in this phylum. These are the second most diverse with 75,000 known species. Their body plan vary, but share the ventral foot with the locomotion, the mass of organs inside, and the dorsal mantle cavity, and which can secrete, again, calcium carbonate shell. Many have radula, at the mouth for scraping food. Uh, their foot varies in shape and in function and can be retracted or extended. Um, they have the true cavity with restricted cavity around the heart. The mantle cavity forms independent of the other body cavity and houses the internal organs. And, and many have open circulatory system with hemolymph, except squid and octopus that have closed circulatory system. There are seven classes in this phylum. Some have no plates in their body, and they're worm-like, and they live in deep oceans. Others have only one plate and thought to be extinct until they, were found, they found two dozen species. And others have, others included chiton with eight plated shell. Chiton is shown here with eight shells, plated shells rather. Um, they use, uh, they breathe using ventral gill and attach using ventral foot. Then there's the two shells clams, phyla. Oysters and other shellfish are included in that phyla. They filter eat, and they don't have radula, and they use gills, and they excrete waste using nephridia. Some bivalves secrete and deposit what we call the mother of pearls around the foreign particle that's found in the mantle cavity. And the gastropods are snails, slugs, and conch. Uh, these have asymmetric shells with foot for movement. They also have tentacles with eyes. And these have complex radula. And the mantle cavity has gills and nephridia. Okay shown here. Here's a snail. Here's a slug. Uh, 
Um, how diverse are mollusks? There are uh, these include things like octopus, squid, cuttlefish, and nautilus. Some have shells or reduced shells. Some display vivid colors for camouflage. Others can uh, change their colors rapidly to mimic the background. And they all have very well-developed brain, complex eyes, and closed circulatory system. Um, <clears throat> foot is lobed. Some are developed into tentacles with suckers, like in octopus and squid. And these can move uh, rapidly using jet propulsion of water by contracting the mantle cavity. Um, there are some examples of uh, mollusks shown here. This is called boat feet. Here's the here's a nautilus. Here's a cuttlefish. Here's a squid, and here's an octopus. Now we're moving on to annelida. Annelids are segmented worms in marine, terrestrial, and freshwater habitats. And these require humidity for survival. There are about 16,500 species, including earthworms, marine worms, and leeches. Uh, these are bilaterally symmetric, and they have repeating features in each segment, like kitas. These are hair-like extension. Uh, they have the true cavity with uh, fluid inside. The digestive system include mouth, pharynx, and esophagus. And they have the closed circulatory system, including heart, vessels, and capillaries. And the nervous system is made up of nerve cords and ganglia. Some are hermaphrodites, or they can shift into temporary sexes. Uh, annelids include two classes, uh, ones with many ketas, or hairs. Um, some have rings that secrete mucus and form the cocoon for the eggs. Um, earthworms are the most abundant of these, of the uh, ones with few hairs. And they include leeches that contain suckers at the both ends. And they can swell because the difference in segmentation between the body and the body cavity. And the ones that, uh, I don't want to say this name because it's going to confuse. Um, there are 150 leech-like species in this uh, phyla that are obligate symbionts, and they require a host. And we'll move on to echinoderms and chordates. Echinoderms, or spiny skin, are exclusively marine. They only live in the sea. They include things like sea stars, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, sand dollars, and brittle stars. They have pentaradial symmetry with endoskeleton made from car calcium carbonate, again. And these are secreted from epidermal cells. And they can also have vivid colors and toxins. These can regenerate after losing 75% of their body. And notably, they have what we call water vascular system with central ring canal and the radial canal, which circulate <clears throat> water, which allows gas, nutrient, and waste exchange. And it's the uh, madriporite that regulate, shown up here, that regulate the water amount and allow the two feet to move using hydrostatic pressure. Um, and I'm gonna skip this. 
And their nervous system also has a central ring shown here. Um, and uh, they can have separate sexes or reproduce asexually by regenerating. <clears throat> Echinoderms have five classes. Sea stars have about 1,800 species. They have thick arms as compared to brittle stars, which have thin arms. That's the what makes them different. Um, sea urchins, shown here, they have two feet, but no arms. No. And here are the sea lilies. These are stocked suspension feeders. And here's the uh, sea cucumber. They have, they're very soft and have five rows of two feet and tentacles for feeding. Now when you get to the chordates, majority of chordates are vertebrates and they include about 60,000 species of lampreys, fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. There are some shared key features that appear in development. One is the notochord. The other is the dorsal hollow nerve cord. Pharyngeal slits and post anal tail. Notochord, shown here, is a rod shaped skeletal support. In vertebrates, this induces neural tube and gets replaced by the spine. The hollow nerve cord is a, a hollow tube formed from the ectoderm above, and th this develops into the brain and the spinal cord. The pharyngeal slit is in the pharynx behind the mouth and opens to the outside. In the fish, these are the gills. In some invertebrates, these are used to filter feed. And in tetrapods, or four-legged animals, they are parts of the ear and tonsils. And the uh, postanal tail, this is the uh, posterior extension. They provide the fins for the fish, tails for, in animals, and they provide balance, movement, signaling, and so on. In many sp species, tail is absent or reduced. There are chordates that are invertebrates. Uh, these include things like tunicates and lancelets. Tunicates are sea, squ sea squirts, and they have four chordate features as larvae, but only pharyngeal slits as adults. Okay, here's a, a larvae shown here. Notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, post anal tail, and pharyngeal slits are all present, but in adults, adult tunicates, only the pharyngeal slit is present, and that is used for filter eating. The lancelets shown here have all features, all four features as adults, and, but these are only a few centimeters long, um, and they suspension feed. Now we get to the vertebrates. These are the, obviously the most recognizable organisms in animal kingdom. There are greater than more than uh, 62,000 species, but they represent only a small portion of vertebrates that have existed. Dinosaurs were vertebrates. This Siberian tiger, this Panamanian golden frog, and this Philippine eagle, all are currently critically endangered and face extinction. So we'll start discussing <clears throat> the vertebrates in detail. Fishes, there are two types of fishes, jawless fishes and jawed fishes. Obviously jawless fish lack the jaws. They include things like hagfish and lampreys. Hagfish is shown here. Lampreys are shown here, this black stringy thing. 
hagfishes are eel-like scavengers that live on the ocean floor. Um, and they feed on dead animals. Um, they also secrete large amount of mucus that allows them to escape predators. And they can enter the body of the dead animals and eat them from inside out. Um, hagfish skeleton is made up of made up of cartilage. The lampreys are similar to hagfish, except they have brain case and partial vertebrae. Uh, lampreys have toothed funnel, like sucking mouth, and they attach and feed off other fish. Um, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Well, they all spawn. It's interesting. They spawn in freshwater, and the larvae suspension feed for first three to fifteen years. Now we're moving to the jawed fishes. Some are cartilaginous or bony. Cartilaginous fish include things like sharks, rays, and skates. They have paired fins, cartilaginous skeleton, and most of them live in marine habitats, but few in freshwater. And most are carn carnivores, and with some sharks and rays being suspension feeders. And they have keen sense of smell and electro reception. And they have what they what we call ampullae of, Loren of Lorenzini that detect the electromagnetic field produced by living things. They also have lateral line to detect the vibration in water. Uh, most sharks retain their own fertilized eggs uh, that is fed by the yolk. And the rays are skates that are flat with enlarged pectoral fin and the gills are on the underside. So bony fishes obviously have skeleton made of bones. There are about 30,000 species. These are the largest class of vertebrates today. And most fish bones are made by osteocytes using calcium phosphate. Uh, they have a skin covered in scales and they secrete also mucus to reduce drag and aid in osmoregulation. regulation. They also have a lateral line to, for detecting vibration. They also have eyesights and taste cells in the head. Uh, all bony fishes breathe via gills that are protected by a, a flap. There are ray-finned fishes, and then there are lobed fin fishes. Uh, difference is that ray fin fishes have rays of bony spines, and the lobed fishes have lobed fishes have fleshy and supported by bones. And here's a sockeyed salmon and coelacanth shown in comparison. Now we're moving on to the amphibians. The amphibians are tetrapods, and they include things like frogs, salamanders. I'm not going to say this. Um, they have dual life, uh, include metamorphosis from the tadpole to the adult. And they have moist, permeable skin. And this is how they breathe through the skin. Um, all adult amphibians are carnivorous. Uh, and some use their tongue to capture the prey. Uh, some are tailed, some are tailless, while others are legless. Uh, salamanders have four limbs and a tail. Um, that's all I want to say about that. Here's an example of salamander shown here. 
Frogs are the most diverse of the uh, amphibians. There are more than 5,000 species. Body plane is more adapted to move on land. They have four legs and no tails. And they have two stage life cycle, larval tadpole, larval tadpole stage that metamorphoses into the adult. Tadpole is often filter feeding herbivore with gills, lateral line, and tail. And gills and tails, uh, gills and lateral lines disappear and four limbs develop. And it's at this time, eardrum and lungs also develop. And this allows the adult to live on the land. Now we're, we're moving on to reptiles and birds. Reptiles are amniotes, shelled eggs and amniotic sac. These are tetrapods that lay shelled eggs on land and even aquatic reptiles will return to land to lay their eggs. It's usually reproduced sexually, but some display, some will retain the, the fertilized egg inside the mother until it is hatched, <clears throat> until it is time to hatch. They all have scaly skins with keratin and a waxy lipid that prevents water loss. Reptiles are ectotherms. Body heat comes from the outside. And this is why sitting in the sun in a shade is a way to regulate the body temperatures for the reptiles. There are four groups of these. Croco uh, we'll discuss in the next slide. Crocodiles, alligators, they're uh, found in freshwater in the tropics, so can move on land. Uh, I don't know if I want to say, uh, we'll skip this. And uh, lizards and snakes are the largest group among the reptiles. Lizards have four limbs, eyelid, and external ears, which snakes do not have. They vary in size. Gecko is only a few centimeters in size, but Komodo dragon is three meters in length. And the snakes are car carnivorous, found everywhere except in Antar Antarctica. They vary in size from 10 centimeters long uh, thread snake to 7.5 meter long pythons. They also include turtles and they have bony cartilaginous shell made up of carapace on the back and plastron on the belly. Uh, they also vary widely in sizes. Moving on to the birds. Birds belong to the uh, reptile clade, but display unique adaptations. These are endothermic. They generate, generate their own heat. There are different types of feathers, which are modified scales. There are contour feathers that streamline, and then there are the down feathers that insulate. And to power the flight, birds need to reduce weight. So they have hollow bones. There are air spaces in, inside their bones. They also have fused vertebrae to increase the strength. They only have one ovary and they have no teeth. And they also have air sacs branching from the lungs so they can exhale while inhaling at the same time. So there's a constant flow of oxygen. Now we finally get to the mammals. Um, mammals have few unique features. They have hair for insulation. They have, <clears throat> and they also serve as a sensory organ and gives coloration. Their skin have glands that produce sweat and scent for thermal, thermal regulation and communication. It can also uh, produce oil for water resistance. They all have mammary glands for the newborn. 
they all have heterodont teeth, meaning different type and shape, uh, allows, allowing for eating variety of foods. Incisors and canine for cutting and tearing, premolar and molar for crunching, crushing and grinding. grinding. Most are also diphyodont, meaning two sets of teeth. They have the baby teeth and the permanent teeth. There are three groups of these uh, mammals. Monotremes, marsupials, eutherians are the three groups. Uh, of the monotremes, there are three species present, platypus and two echidna. Uh, they're in Australia, in New Guinea only. They lay leathery eggs like reptiles instead of giving birth to live babies. Uh, and adults lack teeth. <clears throat> and they only have one opening for the urinary, fecal, and reproductive products. Uh, marsupials number about 230 species. Kangaroos, Tasmanian devil, koalas are marsupials and also include opossums in America. They have, they all have pouch for developing their youngs. Eutherians are the most widely spread mammals. These include insect eaters, toothless anteaters, rodents, bats, aquatic mammals, carnivorous mammals, and primates. And all of those have complex placenta that connect the fetus to the mother for nutrient and gas exchange and so on for the growth. So we finally get to the primates. Primates include lemurs, tarsiers, monkeys, and apes. The, the size vary widely. Mountain gorilla is 200 kilograms whereas mouse lemur is 30 grams. They all have adaptations for climbing trees. That's rotating shoulder joint, big toe and thumb separated from other digits, stereoscopic vision for depth perception. <clears throat> and they also have bigger brains, flat nails, one offspring per pregnancy, and tend to have upright body stands. There are two groups, prosimians and arthropoids. Prosimians include bush babies, the lemurs and tarsiers, lorises, pados. Anthropoids include monkeys, lesser apes, and great apes. The prosimians tend to be nocturnal and smaller in size than anthropoids. Here are some pictures shown here. Here's a prosimian, a lemur, and the rest are anthropoids. Here's a howler monkey. Here are the gibbons. Here's a chimpanzee. Here's a bonobo, a gorilla, and orangutan. Okay, we'll stop there.